Whereas our last video on Mykonos took you through what we got up to on this beautiful island, I wanted to make this follow-up to take you through some of the things I wish I'd known before visiting. Tips such as how to get around, where best to stay, when to visit, information about beach hopping, reservations, possible costs, and why you'll probably need to change your toilet habits. This guide will make your trip all the more enjoyable so you can just sit back and focus on the good times. This is Suitcase Monkey with 10 things to get the most from your time in Mykonos. So let's start with when to visit as Mykonos very much adheres to an on and off season, both of which have their pros and cons. The island is in full on tourist mode from the start of June to the end of September. We travelled late August with the main downside being that it was incredibly hot. Much like we'd experienced in Santorini, 30 degrees has never felt so burning and sometimes it did mean that for a couple of hours each day we valued shelter over sun. This is also where you'll experience crowds the most, but literally everything will be open and running more frequently. April, May and October are great shoulder options, especially price-wise, but some tours, restaurants or activities may be running at a reduced capacity, so do check before you travel if there's something specific that you're interested in. Visiting from November to March really is the off-season though, with most of the things shown in our previous vlog being completely closed. The upside is that accommodation prices can drop to 50% and those picturesque streets will not be going anywhere. Please do let us know in the comments if you visited during this time as it'd be really interesting to hear your experiences. In terms of how many days to visit, you could probably see all the major sites over three full nights and then add any time on after that for just relaxing and taking your time. You can easily get by without making any dining reservations in Mykonos, but they are recommended for Little Venice and the 180 Sunset Bar that we visited. For Little Venice specifically, we found it best to grab a seat in the morning where there was always plenty of space. The websites for most restaurants and bars that I looked into didn't allow any online bookings and instead opted for the email us approach, which in 2022 might as well be a fax, especially since none of them actually replied. So either calling ahead or in person is suggested if you want to guarantee the top location for dinner or lunch. I'll cover the 180 Sunset Bar later in this video. Now let's talk about getting around the island itself. The interesting fact that I kept hearing is that there are only 30 taxis in the whole of Mykonos, which did seem to fit in with my own experience. I certainly never just saw them driving around looking for customers. This limited supply does make this an expensive option. For example, we paid 25 euros for a 15 minute taxi ride, so keep that in mind when budgeting, but also when selecting the location of your hotel. We were also advised to pre-book the taxi in advance due to the shortage of cars. And by the by, if anyone does want to start a Mykonos taxi joint venture together, then I'm all ears. If you want to explore the whole island more than we did, and there were plenty of areas that we didn't visit, then obviously hiring a car or quad bike is the best way to get around, especially if you're not situated near a bus stop. It is a fairly small island to drive around, with the longest route being east to west, only taking 40 minutes. Cars and quad bikes are easily available from either the airport, your hotel, or in Mykonos town, right next to the Fabrica bus terminal. For us, the buses were perfectly fine for the amounts we wanted to move around. They were clean, air-conditioned, and with Wi-Fi. They generally departed once an hour, and all routes serve the main two bus terminals, which are located 20 minutes apart, north and south of Mykonos town. Although this wasn't relevant for our journeys, this could mean that you need to change buses to get to some routes around the island, which could really add on to your overall journey time. All bus routes though will take you through Mykonos town, so again keep this in mind when choosing a hotel location if this kind of thing is important to you. They are super cheap though, with tickets costing between 1 and 3 euros, and you can buy them either at the terminal booths or from the driver as you board. Now in terms of where to stay, I can only answer that question based on the experience that we had, but here are my thoughts. The first easy answer is Mykonos town itself. 
Almost everything is here apart from beaches, and just as mentioned, all buses will either start or end at the two nearby terminals. Unless you're there for nightlife specifically, the only thing I would search for in hotel reviews in this area is the noise level of where you're looking at, as this could be an issue. Most of the popular locations for beach hotels are along the south coast, all with direct links to Mykonos town. But to be honest, from what I have seen, there are great hotels spread out all over the island, so as long as the transport works for you, then you can't go too wrong in terms of location itself. Personally speaking, we wanted somewhere quiet, by the sea, but still with easy walking distance to a couple of beaches and restaurants, and with easy access to Mykonos town. So with all of that, we ended up staying in the southwest near Ornos Beach. Mykonos town was only 15 minutes away, with the bus stop at the end of the road. The hotel also provided a free shuttle bus service to Mykonos town in the evening, which we used a couple of times and was really convenient. I'll leave a link in the description for the place that we stayed at to check prices, but overall we loved it. Both the breakfast and dinners were excellent, the staff and cleanliness were great, we enjoyed their spa and massage centre, and there was also a little secluded beach at the bottom of the cliff face. A free airport shuttle was also included in the price, which again was really convenient. And you do get to ride in a golf buggy as you're taken to your room, which was almost worth the price of admission alone. I also wanted to mention some smaller local tips that are good to know before your arrival. The number one rule is, do not flush toilet paper down any of the toilets. There are only around 10,000 people who actually live in Mykonos year round, so the drains were not built to cope with the mass influx of tourists that they get each year, so they will get blocked if they're misused. So what this means is you should always use the bins next to the toilet for disposal of all used paper. Now, at first, yes, this does sound horrendous, but you literally get used to it after about two days, so I'm more mentioning it so it's not a sudden surprise to you. Almost everywhere that we visited took credit cards, including the restaurants, but it is worth having a bit of cash on you, as there were a few places that didn't take plastic. For example, we did need cash for the buses and for the official Thelos Island ticket booth. It was because of that reason that we actually ended up buying the Thelos Island tickets at the Sea and Sky Travel Agency, since they did accept card. Literally just a minute away, you could also buy a bunch of other tours and ferry options from here as well. In terms of getting around on foot, there were a lot less steps in Mykonos town compared to our visit to Santorini. So if mobility is on your mind, then this would be an easier option in comparison. For our beach and boat day, the water taxis depart from each stop once an hour from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It only cost 20 euros for unlimited water taxis, so it was a great way around the island and to see the most popular spots along the south coast. The boats themselves were pretty comfy for what they were, but do note that the Platis Giolos stop was the only stop with a permanent dock, so some of my older viewers may need to limber up before climbing aboard elsewhere. Feel free to pause the screen here while I give a quick summary of what to expect from each beach that we visited. One thing to note is that if you want to stay at a particular beach for a while, be prepared that sunbeds can easily ramp up the price of your day. Two sunbeds and a shared umbrella will start from around 30 euros, but prices can easily creep over 100 euros, with the price climbing the closer you get to the water and just, you know, how swanky the umbrella is. In terms of how much things cost, I always find this bit a bit difficult to talk about, because you can always spend as much or as little as you like, depending on what you buy, how much you buy, and so on. So just to give you an idea, lunches and dinners were on the mid to expensive side, similar to London prices, I guess, but without these super cheap prices. So as a couple, without being too extravagant in our choosings, lunches would range from 20 to 50 euros and dinners from 50 to 100 euros. The Thelus Island tour was 60 euros per person, which included the guide and the return ferry. Cocktails can be found around the island from around 10 euros, but can easily go up to 15, 20 euros in the more swanky places. 
If you haven't already seen the full Mykonos vlog that shows most of the dining spots that we visited, I checked that out for more suggestions, but two places I didn't include in that video which I really enjoyed was Bowl, a really relaxed healthy lunch spot a few minutes walk from Ornos Beach, and also Pasta Fresca Barchia, which as the name suggests, has a great selection of Italian food with a cute outside dining setup. So I had quite a few comments about our visit to the 180 Sunset Bar, so I wanted to cover a few booking points here separately. For me, this was my favorite evening that we had, so I would definitely recommend you pre-book through their website. There is a minimum spend for each person, which for us was 60 euros a head, and then all food and drinks we ordered came off that total. We booked the unglamorous stairs area, which was actually the starting price, hence we were relegated to sitting on a cushion on a step, which was actually better than it sounds. The location meant that we were right near the front and got an up close and personal performance, which was excellent. It also got us a couple of cocktails each, these tacos and edamame beans, and then these large servings of battered prawns with sweet and sour dip and this wonderful fruit platter. As mentioned, 60 euros is the smallest minimum spend, which goes up to 150 euros per person for the nicest tables. For walk-ins, there will be a wait with a minimum spend of around 10 to 15 euros, but again, I would suggest you pre-book if you want to get the best overall experience. If you haven't yet seen everything that we got up to in the main Mykonos vlog here on YouTube, then I strongly suggest you give that video a watch along with our Santorini videos. And please leave your own Mykonos tips below to help anyone else who might be planning a trip here. Please leave a like below, subscribe, which all helps support the channel. So until the next one, thanks for watching, Suitcase Monkey.